Hello and welcome to another episode from The Water's Edge. Today you catch up with us back on our COD quest and what better place to start it than where we finished off last year at All Town Beach. We're halfway through November now and by all reports there's been one or two fish about so we thought it was about time we got the rods out. Come down here and give it a go and see if we can put a few fish on camera for you. At the moment we're, we're pretty much at high tide. We've got about half hour or so left of the flood and then we'll be fishing a decent bit of the ebb. It's now about half three in the afternoon, so we've got about another hour or so of, of, of the light left before we'll be fishing in darkness, which is when I'd expect hopefully that some of the fish will move close to the shore and we may pick one or two up. We've got a reasonably big tide today, nothing stupid. The sea's pretty flat calm. It blew a bit yesterday, but it's all calmed off today, and uh, hopefully that may have brought a few fish in. I've got both rods out there at the moment, just easing my way into the session. I'm going to see, I'd expect to start picking some fish up pretty much now and then for the first few hours of the ebb. But that's, uh, that's the plan anyway. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to get this, uh, this spare rig ready. Now as I say, I always like to have a spare rig ready to go so I can quickly unclip and get one back on. So I'll just show you some of the baits we've got. I've got 100 standard blow lug. Wouldn't go anywhere without these. And I've also got some frozen blacks. And I've also got a little box of calamari here. Now the reason for the, the squid and the blacks is at the moment the sea temperature is still very, very warm. Now not that I'm an expert, but I, I, I believe it's still around sort of 12 degrees. And normally at this time of year, it should be about seven or eight. and it's and there still is a lot of crabs about so they've been stripping the baits very very quickly speaking to other anglers and you know looking on some of the, the forums and the catch reports that's been a bit of an issue so I've got plenty of bait with me and I've got some tougher baits that black lug and the, the squid we can make up some not nice cocktails with them and they, they sometimes fish a bit longer than your standard worm so that's the reason for them but I'm just going to start off we'll see how it goes I'm just going to start off with three or four standard blow lug and we have got the uh, the good old pulley panel on today as well pair of 3 hooks nothing complicated and you've probably all seen them before and seen how they fish so we'll just get this bait prepared and then we'll uh, get it hung up and we'll see what the first cast has brought there's a real sort of fine drizzle at the minute as well it's a little a little bit miserable. I don't think it's meant to be any heavy rain, but you can just see everything's getting getting soaked really. But I mean we'll see how it goes. Say so we've got a good few hours at it. It'll be nice to uh to fish on into darkness because as I mentioned, just in general when you tend to pick up the slightly the slightly better fish. I think there's been one or two around, there's been a lot of small codling around. You know, a lot of fish sort of pound, pound and a half. You know, them sort of fish that are just on the on the size mark. But there has been the odd one or two better ones, but I guess we'll we'll find out today. And of course there's been numerous white in which, you know, this time of year they pretty much invade every beach around the UK. But that is that's the bait ready to go. Pretty standard, nice nice big bait nice and streamlined as well we'll just clip that on the impact lead and that'll go out there nicely it's just going to get plenty of smell out in the water plenty of attraction hopefully draw a few fish up the tide i've got six ounce lead on i probably could get away with a five today because it's not a not a particularly big tide but we'll start with a six and and see how it go i reckon when when the ebb starts to run the tide might pick up a little bit you often find at the start and the end of the tides you know they can they can pick up a little bit but we shall start off with that and uh, we shall see what happens. Hopefully we'll uh, be able to report back in a second or two of a fish, but I'm gonna get this hung up, we'll check the baits and uh, see what the score is.
Well, nothing uh, on them first couple of casts, but my suspicions, I guess, were correct because both both uh, rigs were pretty much stripped out with no bait on at all. So I have I've got some squid prepared. So what I might do is here, I'll just show you how one way we can sort of utilize these black lug really in the squid bait. So I'll just get my bait and needle. Got my baiting needle here and one of the black lug worms. Just one way to do it. I'm just gonna thread him up the needle as best as I can. I've only got a quite a short needle. Just nip that sandy tail off. So he's like that. And then all I've done with these neat little squid strips. I just took the head off the squid, took all the sort of guts out if you like and they have that little sort of membrane thing in there, pulled that out and then I just like to use some scissors just because it's just as easy, you haven't got to mess about with knives, you can just trim them up in your hand and you get some nice little strips. Now obviously you can use that with the blow lug just to tip off your hooks but what I like to do is, it's where I'll thread them and wear them up the bait and needle, I'll just clip that, poke the needle through the top like that and lay it back alongside the black lug. You'll see it like so. And then take a bit of the, the fine bait elastic and then I just whip it round. And what that does is that sort of, I mean, you, you, you've probably seen me before, I've done it with a hull squid and you know, you actually put the worms inside, but I was just thinking of a, a slightly different way to do it really. So we go one side, like so, you ain't got, got to really cocoon it either, you know, you can just give it a few lashings round. Just pull that off like that. So you can see the squid is sort of interwoven with a worm. And then what I'll do is I'm going to get another bit, another of the strip I cut. And this time we'll go through the other end of the baiting needle and lay that down that side like so and then we'll try and cover that other bit of worm and then hopefully we should end up with a nice nice streamlined sausage bait with plenty of plenty of smell and plenty of attraction because then you've got you got the best of both worlds you've got that that black lug coming through and you've got the squid so I'll show you the I'll show you the finished article. You end up with a neat little sausage like that and you obviously got like the black lug filling if you like. And then this squid on the outside, add, a, add that bit of extra smell in the water. But what it also does is when there is a lot of crabs around, if you imagine they've got to get through this, this tough squid before they can get to your worms. It's a little sausage there, it's quite a big bait. But then hopefully today we're going to be fishing for big fish anyway. Well, you know, I'm certainly, I'm certainly not targeting little pin whiting. And then all we do is, is we just push the, push the bait and needle. If I can get a grip of it. We just slide the squid sausage off, comes off nice and cleanly, pop the bait and needle down. And then basically you can just treat this like a big worm now. So you just nick the hook in the top. Ease it right, it's a bit of a messy job, but you can then obviously as well, you can have a few of these sausages prepared as well. You know, I can sit there and make a couple up now so they're ready to go. Just knock it around the edge of the hook. So you end up like so. And this top hook, you just set it where you want it. So we'll slide it down a little bit. We'll go one, two, three, four, and just pull it tight, nick it through the top of the squid and there you've got a nice sort of streamlined bait and you'll see what I mean when I just clip it up behind the lead here that's neatly uh, compacted down all ready to go and that, that should fish a little bit longer than you know your conventional blow lug bait you know there's a, that's going to take them crabs a lot longer to work it off and obviously more importantly it's a nice big mouthful to, to any sort of codlin out there who's got the taste of squid and worm. So we'll get this one hung up 
It'll probably as well, what I'll do is, is another little tip, I say a tip, it's just something that I like to do is, is when the crabs are active, and perhaps early on in the, the cod fishing season, because a lot of the time, the crabs will thin out. My dad used to say when we were younger, when we used to go, the first few frosts of the year thin the crabs out. They don't like it. You know, it cools the sea down and they tend to move off into deeper water. But when it is still relatively mild, you know, and they are active, you want to try and, you know, keep them at bay. And that's, that's what that's going to do. So we'll get it hung up. And I say, I almost forgot the little tip, it's just time your cast. So I like to give it, say, I don't know, start off at 20 minutes. And if I reel in, there's no bait left on, I'll try 15 minutes. Then if I reel in again, there's no bait, then we'll go 10 minutes. So on and so on. You just work out, you know, how quick you're actually fishing. Because you don't want to be sitting out there with bare hooks. Because obviously you're not going to, you know, you're not going to catch anything. So just, just work at it. And eventually you'll find a sort of time when you're still winding in with a little bit of bait and go with that and you can just experiment through the session but as I said we'll get this uh, little bad boy hung up and then we'll, uh, we'll probably I think I might tuck myself in the shelter a little bit that drizzle's still coming down and warm up with a cupper and see what happens as we now go into darkness because we are we're quite quickly losing the light now but we'll, uh, we'll check back in in a second and we'll let you know how we're getting on gone and landed the first fish of the session just as we're we're well into darkness now as you can probably tell we've got the camera light on got the headlamp on and there is a little little dogfish if I had a little bite and he I think he may have dislodged the lead for a little while because the line went a little bit slack and I thought it might have been a actually a little codling but it's a little doggy well hooked Right the good and we catch a lot of these in the summer but very wiry he's full of life but yeah catch a lot of these in the summer but not so much in the winter especially down south here but he's trying to bend himself around but you probably just about pick him up on camera there something different from white in any way but very pretty little fish say so when there's there's not a lot of other fish about I don't mind catching a few of these, you know, they give you a good bite and you know, you know you've got them on, but we're slipping back, get another, another bait on. I actually had a bit of squid on as well that time as you see me bait up and whether that's what's attracted them in there because they like more sort of fishy baits and crab baits and as opposed to worm, but I'm popping back anyway, cracking little fish. Well, we'll just put that little doggy back and uh, I was in the middle of getting a few more a few more of them squid wraps ready as you can see them there so I'm just going to do another one now and get the, the spare rod baited just got to grab my rig the uh, ebb is well and truly underway now as well it's started to pull a little bit and the lines are sort of swinging well down around to the left so I'm just casting a little bit up tide, get that little bit of bow in the line and give that lead a good chance to grip in. It sort of twisted my old trace up a little bit. They can do that, they almost sort of ball up. But, won't be a minute. Take the old bait off as well. You see the, the little bit of squid on there. As I said, it just it just stays on that little bit longer you know already tonight we reeled in one one sort of big big edible crab if you like and they're uh, unusual to still pick them up at this time of year you know i know there are summer fish and we've actually had them up up north norfolk just this summer but to get them in mid-november is pretty crazy but you know i'm probably sure perhaps where you're fishing now you know you may be noticing things that are slightly out of season or slightly unusual but we'll just uh Get another bait ready. 
we get one of these these black lug and what I'm going to do with this one is actually when I put him on the needle I'll just double him up on himself and uh, give him a little bit of elastic before I add the squid to him but I mean some people swear by these as baits you know so I know there's a there's an older guy who just lives up the road from me in fact and he absolutely swear by using these he'll buy a bulk load in frozen or fresh if he can you know you freeze them up and you've always got a wrap you know if all of a sudden on one tide there's a few fish about and you want to get out and give it a go you've always got some bait you're not relying on tackle shops or whatever but I haven't really actually ever done that well on them but I thought I'd bring them today because as I say there was rumours that the crab situation was was pretty bad but you see I've, I've threaded him on there left that bit dangling so I'm just gonna fold that back on himself and just give this a little light elastic nothing major just something to keep it on the needle more than anything it's always handy to have this uh, elasticated cotton with you even though I use it in the summer you know primarily for when I'm fishing with peeler and stuff this time of year it just enables you to offer some different bait combinations you know times when you want to try that little something different but that's the the worm bait and then now we'll just add the squid to it cut some up early so I had it to hand but I just like to be ready just have some baits ready not only that it then means if you've got stuff ready you can uh, you know you can sit down and watch the rod tips and enjoy a cup of coffee but we'll just wrap the squid round there's a few uh, lights up and down the beach so there must must be one or two fish about and it's interesting enough a few actually turned up right on the top of high tide so you know sometimes that can be a good sign if they're if they're local to the area you know they know what bit of tide has been fishing better so that always give me a little bit of confidence we just add that other bit of squid on try and wrap him round to mirror the other bit I mean what you can do as well is the sausages I've got there are quite long so you know it wouldn't do you any harm at all if once they're all elasticated up if you just simply snipped them in half I imagine they'd you know they'd stay together pretty well but I'm I'm hoping that that dogfish was a good sign you know and that we may actually pick up a few fish now but you never know that's uh, one of the beauties of sea fishing you do never know you never know what's around the corner and I guess you know, it's why it's called fishing rather than, than catching, but there's a little sausage on there. You just slide him off the end once you get the bait and needle going. Comes off nicely and there's a nice sausage, but I might just trim these little these little tag bits off, stop it spinning in mid-air, but there's three very dirty but very uh, appealing to the fish, I guess. Squid squid and black lug wraps ready to go and hopefully they will uh keep the sort of the nuisance crabs and nuisance species at bay for a little longer and give one of those codlin out there a chance to home in and uh, and pay us a visit so I'm gonna get that rigged up on the hooks this can be a bit fiddly as well but it, it is worth perhaps just spending that extra few minutes doing it especially now you know I can see the rod tips and stuff and I just spend a few minutes preparing your baits and there as well, I've got two casts that I can have out there within a matter of a matter of minutes, I guess. Really, you just manipulate it round, and that'll kick out there nicely over the knot. And then we'll just adjust that hook again, and we'll go and like one, two, three, four. Back round. I'll probably just break that little bit of squid off. And there we go. That's ready to cast. So that'll cast nicely, nice and streamlined. Get that clipped on the lead. Like so. And then uh, it's just a case now of just add fish and hopefully no cod and out there's gonna be able to resist that. So hang up on the tripod, get a flask of coffee on the go, sit back and watch the tips and uh, see what'll happen. I 
just had a little tap on this rod and I think we've got a fish on there. He's only just down. Just in the breakers. Let's have a little look. Yeah, it's a typical size white and really. I've had a, uh, a few of these now. We haven't bothered showing them because you all know, know what they look like, but there you go. Hundreds of them normally at this time of the year come in, especially under the cover of darkness, you know. They really normally a bit of a feed and friends and get stuck into a worm bait and that, but the little chap will just, he's only lightly hooked, so we'll go back. Yeah. Have a little look at him. Nothing special, but a fish all the same. We thought we'd just check in with one so you know we're still here. But uh, I don't know how much longer we're going to give. We're going to carry on for a little while. I think we've got a bit of bait left and whatnot. So, yeah, I'm sure we'll get a few more of these and hopefully might just manage a, manage a codden or two. But we'll get him back. Just having another... Uh, Another wind in this, been out there for a fair while, the old squid and black lug wrap and it's been really really quiet to be honest with you. No bigger fish, just the the whiting and stuff. So I thought it was time to change the fresh baits. So I'm not sure how much longer we're gonna give it to be honest because we're now halfway through the ebb and it's all been very disappointing. There doesn't look like there's too much out there and unfortunately we can only catch what's in front of us but I just thought I'll show you you can see there the, the the benefit of using that squid you still got enough bait you know even though that's been out there 15 20 minutes something like that that's still fishing you know there's still going to be a bit of scent and that in there and that's plenty enough for a fish to home in on but I'm gonna run and clip it get another fresh one on we might have another couple of chucks or so and see what happened but the tide's well and truly on its way out and I thought that may have brought a few fish in but it just doesn't sort of seem that it has. I say the, the whiting and the dogfish and bits and pieces but it's been tough to be honest. It's a little bit disappointing because I really thought we may have you know got, got amongst a few tonight. Good conditions for it you know reports have been pretty encouraging but it's been nice to get out I guess anyway you know and blow away the cobwebs and it sure beats sitting in front of the telly but there's still there's still chance so i'm gonna get this one out and then um yeah we'll check back and uh let you know what's happening well as you can probably see we're we're back in the car now and it was a pretty disappointing session if i'm honest i really hoped for a little bit more today things you know things look good and but but it's just not happened and well, I don't know why really, perhaps one thought is that we've, we've actually fished the wrong part of the tide, perhaps you know this time of year it fishes better on the flood tide, so perhaps next time we'll get down there, you know, and as opposed to today fishing the ebb like we've done, we'll get down there at low water and fish all of the flood and hopefully you know that might yield some different rewards for us, but who knows, T personally myself I think that perhaps it might be a case of trying a different bit of beach because the beach down there has changed so much. I mean, if you go back and you watch our very first Cod Quest video, we done pretty much a year ago to the day, the beach was vastly different. So whether for some reason or other the shingle has moved and is shallower and, you know, the fish just aren't there no more, you know, I, I don't know. I had a guy actually, interestingly, contact us on Facebook and his views on it were that the beach wasn't as good as it had been through the years, but we shall see the main thing is that you know the quest has restarted again and we're back up and running it was really nice to get out and blow away the cobwebs you know catch a few white and get back into the swing of things check all my gear is okay you know which you know touch wood thankfully it, you know it all was so i think all we're going to do is now we just stopped at the at the mcdonald's down the road so we're going to get some grub and then i think we'll uh we'll probably head off home and get cleaned up and dry some of this gear out right? because we got absolutely soaked as well as it was packing up the drizzle turned into heavier rain and you know it's been it's been a little bit of one of them sort of sessions today but you know we will be back so as usual thanks for watching be lucky and we'll see you again on the next one we going <laughs> yeah well, i can't do it now <laughs> <laughs> I can't. We have to stop it and start because I'm going to be laughing now. Just go. I can't because I'm smirking. <laughs>